The new M1 iPad Pro is now Thunderbolt compatible, which means you should be able to use Thunderbolt drives and also Thunderbolt docks with the iPad. So in this video, I'm going to be testing out one of my favorite Thunderbolt 3 docks, and that is the CalDigit TS3 Plus, which I've featured on this channel, and I've also already done a review on. Now, this is the iPad Pro 12.9 inch. It is the base model version, but I have upgraded the storage to a 256 gigabyte SSD. But apart from that, everything is stock, so eight gigs of RAM and everything else. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with Thunderbolt docks, Essentially, they allow you to act as a hub for whatever device you plug into it. So in this case, it's an iPad. So plugging in a single cable to my Thunderbolt 3 dock should allow me to use multiple drives, monitors, and external accessories. And if any of those devices are Thunderbolt compatible, such as this SSD from Sabrent, it should give us the same speeds or equivalent speeds on the iPad. So without any further ado, let's plug in the CalDigit TS3 Plus into the iPad and we'll see what we can get. Okay, so straight away you can see there that we are charging, so it definitely is working. Uh, the dock, the light is turned on, everything looks good. So what we'll do first of all is we're actually going to plug in this Sabrent SSD. So this is a Thunderbolt 3 SSD, it's four terabytes, and it's the XTRM-Q model number, so it's a super, super fast drive. In previous videos on my channel, I've been able to get about 2,400 megabytes per second read and write speed, so it's a blazing fast drive. So let's plug this drive into the Thunderbolt port on the dock. And as you can also see, I have a just an old school one terabyte hard drive plugged in as well just to see if that works. So we'll come into the files app first of all, and you can see immediately the XTRMQ drive is appearing as is the Seagate one terabyte drive. So that's totally fine. Uh, we're gonna come into this third party app called FE File Explorer Pro. Now this is a paid app, I think it's only around $5. But the good thing about this app is that it's gonna give you a little bit more clear idea of the transfer speeds. So what we'll do is we'll come into the XTRMQ drive. You can see that loads up here, totally fine. Uh, I have a previous video of mine here that's five and a half gigabytes in size. So if I play that, you can see that's working totally fine. So let's right click on this. Uh, let's actually copy and let's paste this onto my iPad. So you can see, I'm just gonna replace that. You can see that we're getting around 700 megabytes per second write speed. So about 750, which although it's pretty good, it's nowhere near the max speed of this particular drive. So let's try doing a slightly bigger file or folder. So let's try this 4K footage folder. So I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste this on my iPad. Okay, so we're getting a little bit better write speeds here. So around 800 megabytes per second. But again, guys, this thing can do almost 2,500 megabytes per second. So if this is only hovering around 750 to 800, that is just not good at all. That's very, very slow. So let's actually just stop that because I've done this testing before and it stays at that same consistent rate. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna show you guys something interesting. So I'm going to copy one of these files that I've already transferred over. So I'm going to copy to XTRMQ. So you can see here the actual write speed from the iPad onto the external Thunderbolt drive is pathetic to be honest. It's only 160 megabytes per second. So the really cheap hard drive I have plugged in is only a little bit slower than that. And this is a six to $700 drive. So that's pretty shocking to be honest. Now as to exactly what's causing this, there are a few ideas. So it could just be that iPad OS is not optimized to take full advantage of the Thunderbolt transfer speeds. So this iPad theoretically should be able to do up to 40 gigabits per second, but as you can see, that's just not happening anywhere. So that is enough for drive speed. What about other accessories such as an external monitor? Let me grab a 27 inch 4K monitor and we'll see if it works with the Thunderbolt dock. Okay, so here we have the monitor and what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually just going to plug it in. Now guys, just um, a quick note, this is actually the third cable I've had to try. So I tried USB-C to USB-C, I tried DisplayPort to USB-C, none of it worked. So I had to go hunting for a 
uh, DisplayPort to DisplayPort cable and only then would it work. So as you can see there, working totally fine. Uh, if I open up say LumaFusion for example, loading up fine. Uh, if I stream this in full size and if I play this in real time, you can see it's working perfectly fine. Uh, the actual quality is good too, so no real issues there. So it's good to see that this is all working, at least somewhat working. So as I said before guys, we really need to wait until WWDC in a few months just to see how iPad OS is going to evolve because in its current state, it's I wouldn't call this device a pro device at all because you're still very, very limited with what you can do. But like I said before, it's good to see that at least Thunderbolt works to some extent. So hopefully those changes are gonna be made to the software, which should allow us to be able to use this. Maybe not quite to the same extent as the Mac, but somewhat similar. Anyway guys, thanks for watching this video and any questions, leave them down below. But apart from that, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.